cannot be God's given. I want to welcome everyone to our morning service, those that are watching us via internet. We want to welcome you to Blessed Hope Mission and Baptist Church morning worship service and those that are here this morning as well. I want to talk to you from the subject this morning of judging. Judge not or be judged or just simply from the subject judging others. If you would find your place in your Bibles to Matthew chapter 7 verse 1 through verse 5 will be our unit of thought for this morning. Matthew chapter 7 verse 1 and if you have it please stand for the reading of the word that I read aloud read along with me in your Bibles silently Matthew 7 and verse 1 this is a very familiar text I believe that everyone has knows it and at some point in time you quoted it to someone else and it reads it says judge not that ye be not judged for with for with what judgment ye judge, ye shall be judged, and with what measure ye meet, it shall be measured to you again. And why do it? Why beholdeth the mote that is in thy brother's eye, and consider not the beam that is in thy own eye? Or how would thou say to thy brother, Let me pull out the mote out of thy eye, and behold, a beam is in thy own eye? question. Verse 5 says, Thou hypocrite, first cast out the beam out of thy own eye, and then shalt thou see clearly to cast out the moat out of thy brother's eye. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you again for your grace, your mercy that allowed us to be here today. We thank you, God, for just being God, being such a merciful God, a wonderful God. So, Lord God, we say thank you just for waking us up this morning and starting us on our way. We thank you for life, health, and we thank you for, for strength. Father, we just thank you for being such a good God. If we had 10,000 tongues, we couldn't thank you enough. So, Lord God, we just say thank you. And we come now to the point of this service where we break the bread of life. I pray now that you will lift me up into your storehouse of wisdom, that you will, lift, that you will anoint me from the crown of my head to the sole of my feet. You will give me preaching power from on high, that I can preach this sermon with power and with clarity. Like John say, let me now decrease while you increase, that they always hear from you and never from me. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Thank you, and you may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I just want to talk to you for a few moments this morning from the subject judging others judging others this is one of the most quoted scriptures of all time and i believe it's quoted more than john 3 16. people who don't even go to church know this scripture god said judge not or ye shall be judged people love to use this verse when someone says something, listen, about their sin, the first thing they want to say is you can't judge me. The Bible says you can't, you can't judge me. Judge not a, or are you going to be judging your spouse out of a lot of people who have no earthly idea of what this text really means. And I venture to say that people who quote this verse, most are the ones who don't understand it the least. It just happens to fall into line with the spirit of our time. It really bothers me to hear someone use Matthew 7 and 1 that way. Listen, but we see it's nice to have a verse to prove what we already believe and what we think. That's how this verse is being used today. It has been used to convey the idea of ba basically saying you live your life and let me live mine. Or uh, you live your lifestyle and leave me uh, alone. Listen, this is the problem that we have, but many, many do not uh, tell how many would tell you that this is 
how I live and you shouldn't tell me how to live my life, nor should you impose your standards of morality on me. That's the way most folks feel today. Don't put your standards of morality on me. That church going, that Bible thumper and all of this, let me live my life the way I live. And whenever you say something about sin, the first thing that most folks would say is the Bible says you can't judge me. We live in a world that hates to be judged of sin. The world believes that we should be tolerant of every truth, every worldview, and every religion. Listen very carefully. The mindset is that all the views are equally valid. A lot of folks would tell you every God is the same God. Allah is the same God. He just has a different name than Jehovah. The uh, uh, Jehovah Witnesses, they have a God. Their God is the same. It's just a different name that all views are, are valid. There's no difference between Islam, Jehovah Witnesses. There's no difference between Mormons and Christians. We all can come together and worship together. It's the mindset, listen, of the world today that all views are equally valid. And if you don't uh, if you don't have the correct mindset, you're labeled as being intolerant. There's only one way to heaven. I don't care what Oprah say, Obama say. They say there's millions of ways, but yet there's only one way to heaven. And if you don't believe that, if you believe there's millions of ways to heaven, and you only believe there's one way, now you are intolerant. You're different. I remember the HRO. We had the issue going on with the city. Uh, ordinance about the men and women in the bathrooms and I found myself being intolerant because I didn't view the same viewpoint as the way they viewed it. I viewed it the way God says that it ought to be. So I find myself being intolerant because I'm not in agreement with what the world says. It does not matter what they say. I don't care about popularity, power, presence, or whatever it is. God's word stands on his own. Just because someone that's popular says something that does not change one iota of the word of God. We live in a, late, in a nation that no longer recognizes sin. They no longer recognize it in the point of being homosexual or homosexual marriages or anything. Now we call right wrong and wrong right. But listen, in this text, the Pharisees were judging Jesus and they found him to be inadequate. He was not offering the same kind of kingdom that they wanted or asking for the same kind of righteousness that they were exhibiting, so, so they rejected him. Now, they wanted a, a revolutionist. Jesus came that we all might be saved, but, but they wanted someone to, to get the oppression of the Romans off their back, so they disagreed with Jesus' views. So they disagreed with him, and, and so they rejected him. But Jesus, therefore, forewarned them against a hypocritical judgment. And that's what we find in this text here. It never says that we should not judge. But it also says that we should not be hypocritical in our judgment. There's three things I want us to notice in our short time together today. The practice of judgment recorded. The problem of judgment revealed. And the prescription of judgment that is recalled. But notice point number one. The practice of judgment uh, are recorded. Have you ever uh, judged someone that you didn't know? You met a, you, well, you didn't even meet the person. You don't know him from Adam. You just saw him and you, you I don't like him. I don't like them. You know, and talk to the person. You may not like the way they sit. You may not like the way they walk. You may not like the fact that they got eyelashes on. You've never talked to them, but you've already prejudged them. You already don't like them. But when you come to know them, they become one of your best friends, but we prejudge them and say that I don't even know them, but I dislike them. I don't know if anybody ever done that but me. Uh, and then you finally get to know them, and they become one of your best friends. But we pre prejudge the practice of judgment uh, should begin with us. Jesus did not forbid us from judging others, but did listen. But the people who believe all that is said and accept every claim to be spiritual falls into problems. You cannot believe everything that someone says without forming some kind of judgment to know whether it's right 
or it's wrong. God never said that we should not not judge, but it's cause for a hypocritical judgment. Does the scripture say that we are not to judge others? That's emphatically no. But what the scripture does teach us is that we should not be hypocritical in our judgment. We must judge. First John chapter 2 verse 6, 6, 16 and 17. And it says if a person is a friend of the world, he's an enemy to God. How do we determine that he's a friend of the world? We have to judge. Judgment. God says that we are to judge righteously. We have to judge. We have to make decisions, even in relationships. You meet a man, you got to judge him. I meet a woman, you got to judge him. Well, he's got a job. He, he may have a good job. Maybe he don't have a job. Do I want to stay? We have to make judgment calls. We can't simply just agree with what everybody says and run with it. But it says we cannot be hypocritical in our judgment. And that simply means that I cannot judge you for what I'm doing. If I'm committing adultery, I can't condemn you for committing adultery if I'm doing the same thing. So the same judgment that I place on you comes back on me. It never said we cannot judge. But it says it's a hypocritical Judgment, you get some churches today, the pastors would tell, tell the congregation that folks should not judge you. Everybody's sin and everybody falls short. And that's just the silliest thing that I've ever heard in my life. If someone is going down the wrong path, we as believers ought to be there to correct them. Amen. Notice the command there directed in verse number one. And it says, judge not that ye be not judged. Now this is very carefully, the command refers to a, a rash or a unjust judgment. Romans 2 and 1 says, Whomsoever that thou art that judges, for wherein thou judges another, thou condemnest thyself. For thou that judges doeth the same thing. It's talking about a hypocritical judgment. You're judging someone for doing the same thing that you are doing. God forbid that not that we should not judge, but that we should judge correctly, righteously. Romans 2 and 1 explains in the sense of condemning. Christ does not condemn judging as a magistrate or a judge for that when according to justice is lawful and is necessary, but judging without all the information. You ever judge somebody and you found out that you didn't have all the information? They did not tell you everything about the problem and you cast a judgment without all the information. That is what is called a hypocritical judgment when we judge incorrectly or we judge without having all of the information. But one day we all will stand before the bar of God, the judgment seat of God, the God of this universe, and he's going to judge us righteously because he's all seeing, he's all knowing, he's everywhere present. So whatever you've done, God knows about it. In the court system today, we have to have a judge, we have to have a jury, we have to have those that come forth and bring the evidence because we don't know everything, so they try to piece it together. But when we stand before the bar of God, the God of this universe, he's going to judge us righteously. Righteously, It is impossible for us to always judge correct because we don't know the heart and the motive of a person. Only God knows that. Those who have overcome obstacles in life should be lifted up, not torn down. I was listening. Uh, uh, Nick and I, we were watching. I think it was the news and it was a, a guy who was trick-or-treating and he was a sex offender. He was trick or treat, and, and the man simply said, I was 18 years old, I made a mistake in life, and now you won't let me live. He said he made a mistake. We don't know the heart, the intent of a person. Now some sexual offenders, they'll continue to do it. Some won't, we don't know the heart of an individual, so it's hard for us to judge them or to label them. Now if the truth was told, and we tell the truth and not lie. Many of us, a long time ago, we had issues with drinking and clubs, but now we have been saved. Our motive has changed. Our heart has changed. We're not the same person that we used to be, so we have to be careful when we begin to judge one another without all the information or without knowing the intent. 
of the of the heart. We have to know it's in, it's almost impossible for us to judge it. You know, I had a I had an issue, and I share this with you, of people standing on the side of the road begging for money. Now, at one point in my life, I would never give them money. But see, I don't know that person's heart. I don't know his motive. I don't even know his situation. So I think it's wrong for me not to give. I don't know. I can't judge him because he's on the side of the road, because he's homeless. I can't make a judgment call because I don't know his life. I don't know what he's been through. So if I do have any, any change on me, which most of the time I don't, but if I do, I tend to try to give because I don't know the motive and I can't judge him for where he is in life. Because we don't have all the information, you know, what happened to, to get him to the point to where he is now. But God in here is talking about a hypocritical judgment, not only the command that's uh, directed, but notice the condition that's described. If Jesus looked at the religious situation of his day, he saw that judging others had become a great religious problem. And that's what we do in the church. You know, folks walk in the church immediately we start judging. Y'all don't have to say nothing. We look at each other and look at them and then we well, maybe the clothes they have on or maybe the way their hair is or maybe the way they look or maybe the way they, they smell when they walk into the church. We start casting judgment. So we have to really be careful when we begin to judge one another. And this is what happened with the Pharisees. It was judging on a religious uh, arena. The Pharisees and the scribes sat in the place of critics, and they were quick to pass judgment on those who did not uh, live up to their standards or their expectations. So when folks come into church, if they don't look like us, now me, I never dress down, but I'm not going to look down on those that, that tend to want to dress down. That's just your preference. It's not mine. When I was in the world, I didn't dress down. I gave the devil my best at all times. So when I get in the church, guess what? I'm going to give God my best at all times. I hear some folks saying, I've been delivered from the three-piece suit. You know, once I become a full-time pastor, I'm going to wear a suit every single day for the rest of my life. That's just me. I'm not going to look down on you because you have a different mantra than, than I do, but that's just the way that, that I am. But we quick to pass judgments when folks don't live up to our expectation. Jesus is warning them against self-righteous judgment that destroys lives. Critical spirits, you know, the one that come to church and say, you know what, that, that pastor, he preached too long. He know good as well. He shouldn't be preaching for no 45, 50 minutes. He ought to be preaching for at least 20 or 30 minutes. Look at the first lady. Look at her dress. She know that dress is too tight. Look at her with a dress too too short. Uh, look at her. You know, we tend to, to cast judgment with a critical mind. We get in the churches of the, 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 the sermon is, is too short. Uh, the sermon is too long. The pastor stayed up. He, he talked too long. The church service is too long. It ought to be shorter. And this is where some people have a critical spirit. They look down on others in order to make themselves look bigger. I've got problems, but see, my problem is not as bad as they problem. You know, sometimes we criticize others in the, with the mindset to build ourselves up. You remember the, the, the story of the two men went to the temple to pray. One was a Pharisee, the other was a publican. And the Pharisee went to the front of the building, in front of the church, and he smote on his breast and he prayed that, I, you know what, I'm glad I'm not like these folks. I tithe, I give my, my tithe, my offering, I, I fast three times a day. And most folks are like that in their prayer that I'm glad I'm not like these folks. But the publican stood back afar off and smote on his breast. Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. And that should be the mindset. We have to be careful when we start saying that, that we're judging others. Like, like when Katrina hit the Big Easy uh, in New Orleans, I heard so many people say, well, you know what, there's sin in New Orleans. There's sin everywhere. We need to just be thankful that the hurricane went around us 
and then he announced it's just as much sin in Jacksonville as it is in New Orleans. We become hypocritical when we say their sin is worse than our sin. We have to be careful with our with our judgment that we put people down and when we judge others, we should do it humbly without criticizing and without trying to inflate our own ego. If someone stumbles and falls, we ought to be there to help them up. We ought not to be there to criticize them. I told you so. I told you you shouldn't have did this. But we ought to pick them up and we ought to help them on their way. We're talking about judging others. We've looked at the practice of judgment recorded, but I want us to notice the second thing, the problem of judgment that's revealed. Notice the consequences detail. And it says, for, here's the reason. It says, for with what judgment ye judge, it ye shall be judged. And with what measure ye meet, it shall, future tense with a promise, be measured back to you uh, again. Meet, that means to be measured. You shall be judged by the same rule in which you apply to others. We're not talking about judging as the Bible says that, that we ought to judge. But when it's a hypocritical judgment, the same judgment that you placed on that person is going to be returned back to you. What goes around comes around. You reap what you so the same way you judge others is the same way you're going to be judged. If you judge them without compassion, then you're going to be judged without compassion. That's the way folks are today. They simply want to judge others, but when it comes to them, they want compassion, but simply not like they give. They judge, and they judge without compassion. And it's the same way that you're going to be to be. To be judged the same way. We are not God and we can't see the heart of man. Nor did we create right and wrong. But the Bible says we are to love one another as we love thy, thy, thyself. God is not a respecter of a person. We are to love everyone. The consequences detail. But notice the charge defined there. It says before you try to correct me. You need to get your own self right. <laughs> Before you try to say how long I'm preaching or uh, try to uh, uh, find fault in the pastor, first of all, you need to get yourself right. Before you address my sin, you need to get rid of the sin that's in your life. So many folks are so prevalent, so not mindful of the sin that they have in their life, but we're so quick to judge others, but we have sin in our life. Before you try to correct me, you need to get your life together Amen. first. Amen. Before you try to tell me about my children, before you try to tell me about my marriage, before you try to tell me about situations in my finances in my life, you need to get your life together first. Many people are guilty of sin so deeply. Sin has conquered them and they have become blind to their own sin. They are sensitive uh, to sin in others, but they are desensitized to the sins in their own heart. They have become desensitized to their own sin, but you are critical and condemning someone else. Yes. And you are committing the same sin. You're doing the same thing. You just as jacked up as they are, but yet you're going to condemn them. Yes. You got to get it together before you begin to judge others. They can point the finger and they can find fault in you, but not in themselves. They can't see their own shortcoming. They can't see their own problem, but they can find every fault in the book when it comes to you. But they can't even see the little shortcoming. They're overly critical, going around nitpicking yes. with a nitpicking attitude, digging and searching for faults, always suspecting the worst. Yes. Someone just had a baby. Well, you know that ain't his. <laughs> you know that's the milkman baby. Because I saw the milkman coming out the house. That baby don't even look like him. He look just like that milkman. We have a, a critical <coughs> way of, of, of thinking. We always of thinking and suspecting the work. We're digging and trying to find uh, our problems and we nitpicking uh, with an attitude, digging and searching uh, for faults. But not only that charge that's defined, but notice the, the comparison described in verse number 
verse, verse number four, and it says, or oh, and it says, or how how would thou say to thy brother, let me pull out the mote out of thine eye? And it says, and behold, a beam is in thy own eye. Now that simply means a beam is like a, a tree. He said, before you can remove the, the, the moat, is a speck of dust. So you got a speck of dust in your brother's eye, but you got a whole tree in front of your eye. So it says you got to remove the tree from your eye that you can see clearly how to remove a speck of dust from your brother's eye. That simply means that you need to get yourself together, your life together first. And it says the meaning is that you are more quicker to acute the judgment for the smallest offenses in others than a much larger one that's on the inside of you. You're doing more dirt, more sin. You're jacked up more than the person that you are trying to condemn. He's talking about that hypocritical judgment. Galatians 6 and 1 says if a brother is overtaken in a fall, he which is spiritual. Yes. That means the one that is mature. He is the one that goes to the brother and lift him up. See, that's what I got a problem with that dog on Facebook. Facebooks give idiots an opportunity to have a forum to speak their minds. They're not, they, they don't have no clue about marriage, but they're a marriage counselor. They have no clue about financing, but they're a financial counselor. They can sit there and they're the best thing. And if you look at their lives, if you look at their lives on Facebook, they got the best life in the world and their life is all jacked up. But they give them a forum that they can speak and people listen and believe what they say. You got to be able to discern. You got to be able to judge righteously. But he's talking about those that are of a hypocritical judgment. We can see the small offense in, 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 in our brother's eye, but we can't see the larger one that's in our own eye. Before we can remove the small offense in our brother's eye, we have to remove the large one that's in our own eye. We have to get our lives right first before we start condemning and questioning other people's lives. Even a very small object that should hinder the vision of another should be discerned more quickly than a much larger one that's in our own sight. You remember the life of David. David is a good illustration of a hardened heart. Because of lust, he committed adultery. He tried to hide it. And then, listen, he arranged the death of, of her husband. And remember the parable, they gave the parable of the, the man with the ewe lamb. And David stood up and said, this man ought to be killed, ought to be put to death. And then the man, the, the prophet said, thou art the man. He cast condemnation on a man for doing the same thing he did. It just, it just was a parable, but he was talking about David all the time. And David stood up and said, he ought to be killed. Who is this man? Show him to me. And the prophet said, you are the man that I'm talking about. You're the one that's casting judgment on this man for doing the same thing you did. And that's the way we are are today. And we cast judgment on, you listen, we can sit there and watch television. And somebody can rob a bank and we catch judgment on that bank robber. Yeah, oh, he need to go to jail. He need to go to jail for robbing that bank. And then we come to church on Sunday morning and we rob God. Yes. That's hypocritical. You condemn him for robbing and you rob every Sunday morning. Yep. That's hypocritical. Yep. We have to be careful about how we judge others. How we, how we condemn others. First of all, we need to get it right before we start talking about those that have stole something or, or how we condemn them and how they ought to be placed in, in prison and we turn around and we're doing the same thing. We're talking about judging others. We've looked at the practice. A judgment recorded the problem. A judgment revealing. Finally and lastly, we see the prescription for judgment that is recalled in that fifth verse. And it says, thou hypocrite. Notice the conduct that's disclosed. He says, thou hypocrite. The word hypocrite, if you were to look it up in an English dictionary or a regular 
dictionary, it gives us the idea of a play actor or, or play acting. You see someone that's in a movie, they're playing a, a, a part, they're an actor. They're simply not really who they are. They are pretending to be someone else. It's the same word, hypocrite. And we find that many, we find that this happens in many churches today. We reached a place where he's acting a part in order to hide the sin in their life. You never know somebody like that who play acting, they act in this part like their life is so silly. That's Facebook, that we can get on Facebook and we act like our lives is, is perfect. There's no fault in our lives. You read some of the stories, you look at some of the pictures, you will swear that's the perfect couple, the perfect family, the perfect person. But if you knew them, you would know that that's a lie from the pit of, of hell. They are hypocrites because they are pretending that they are someone else. See, it's, and now they get confused with acting in reality. You ever knew someone like that? They get confused. Well, if you tell a lie long enough, you start to believe the lie. It, it becomes a part of your life. The people get confused between play acting and what's real. They get it all twisted up together. They don't know what's what. They play acting and they, they, they just get refused. They get confused acting with, with reality or what's, or what's real. Now, he has become confused into thinking that he has become what he has pretended uh, to be. We have to be careful about being hypocrites. And the scripture says, your lips and your mouth say you love me, but where is your heart? If you love me, you will keep my, my commandments in the churches. I believe we find more hypocrites in the church than we find in the world. And I believe that's why a lot of folks don't want to come to church today, because there's a lot of hypocrites in church. The first thing that church folks do, they'll start condemning others because they don't look like them. They don't dress like, like them. They don't, they don't appear to be like them. They don't, they're not up to their standards of their, their level. They, they, they don't have enough to sit at the $20,000 round table. They don't have it, what it takes to be a part of this clique or this clique or this clique. And we begin to condemn and look down and God forbid us for doing that. He called them hypocrites. The course that's directed. Verse 5. And it says, first cast out the beam that is in thy own eye, and then thou shalt see clearly to cast out the mote out of thy brother's eye. And it says, first of all, cast out, etc. Christ directs us to the uh, proper way of forming an, an opinion of others and, and the reproving and the correction of them. It says when we accuse someone of doing something wrong, first of all, there's two things that we must do. We must cast and then there's the correction. If someone comes to you for help, I know that no one in this church would turn them away if someone comes for help. And a lot of times we might begin to prejudge this person and say, you know, this, you know, a lot of you got a lot of charlatans out there. You got a lot of folks that are scamming, that are no good, but we don't know the heart of the person in which we are dealing with. This person might be sincerely homeless, sincerely hungry, and it's our opportunity to help out those that are in need. But when we start judging them and saying they don't deserve it because that it might not be a part of their life, it might be a charlatan, we let God handle that. And we were sitting there one day, I was over at Mount Sinai, and I couldn't believe what the deacon said as God walked up to us and he wanted $10 or $20. And you could tell, you know, I'm not casting judgment, you tell he was on drugs. And when the, the deacon said to him, he said, if you do anything other than what you said, with that $20, I hope God strikes you down dead. Now you just lied and say you were hungry, and that almost, that just rocked my world. I had, you know, just getting saved, just, you know, in, in, in the ministry. But to hear someone say something like that, and um, I don't know if that would be correct in, in order or not, but he said he was hungry. He said, if you use this for any other thing than what you said you was going to use it for, 
I hope God casts judgment on you. So we have to be careful about judging. We have to be careful about how we look at people. But God has already told us we can judge. It says judge righteously. He that's a friend of the world is an enemy to God. We have to judge those that are lost come out from among them that are unclean. The unfruitful works of darkness. How do we know that they are in darkness? We must judge. We must have a discernment to know right from wrong, but this text is not talking about simply judging, it's talking about a hypocritical judgment. You cannot hypocritically do judgment for what you are doing, but God has given us the right, the responsibility to judge, to correct someone when they are wrong. But the point of the matter is you need to get your life together first before you start correcting oh, others. Amen. A lot of Amen. folks have that, that problem that they can't even see their own fault. Right. But they can see yours clearly. But it says, first of all, casting. It says, first of all, we must uh, uh, amend. First of all, amend our own faults or to cast the, the beam out of our eye. And I give you the illustration of a beam compared to a moat. A beam is like an oak tree that's in front of your face. And can you imagine what a speck of dust is? Imagine, imagine the difference between an oak tree and a speck of dust. It says, first of all, you need to get rid of the tree that's in front of your eyes so you can see clearly how to get that little speck of dust that's in my eye. It says, first of all, we must cast our own sins away. We can see uh, consciously advance to correct the faults of others. There would be no hypocrisy in our conduct. One may be an adulterer. You may not be an adulterer. You may not be a drunkard. You may not even be a, a thief. But you can be self-righteous and as just as offensive to God as being a drunkard, as, as being an adulterer, as being a liar. It's all the same. It's called sin. First of all, we need to get the sin out of our own life by casting but also correcting we shall see clearly uh, what to do the beam the thing that obscures our sight will be removed and we shall see clearly to discern the small object that obscures the sight of our brothers so we can see clearly how to judge our brother it says first of all we need to get right before we begin to cast now the Bible says we all sin and we all have fallen short. But we need to have a life that has a standard of God before we begin to judge others. If someone is in a fault or they fall, Galatians 6 and 1 again says he that is spiritual. He didn't say he that is new. He didn't say he that is a novice. He didn't say he that is a fool. He said he that is spiritual, that is mature, you ought to be at a level where sin is not plaguing your life, that you can go to a brother and lift him up. And that's the way we ought to be today. And also, it's not only outline, but also the caution there. And as we should never, 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 ever, ever overlook sin. We should never say, well, you know what? I'm just going to let that go, or we should just not allow sin to keep going. If you keep sweeping it under the rug, after a while, the hump going to get big enough, and one day you're going to trip over it yourself. We should never, never say sin is, is okay. We should always reprove sin. Jesus Christ came to die for the sins of this world, the soul that sinners shall surely die the wages of sin is death. We ought not allow sin to continue. That's why we need, as believers, we need to make sure our lives are in order so when we come across someone that has stumbled and fallen, we're able to correct them and show them the right way. Amen. We ought to be able to see our own fault. We ought to be able to see our own shortcomings. We ought to be able to see our own problems as well. We need to, like the song says, sweep around your own front door. 
before you try to sweep around minds. Some people only make the situation worse when they try to condemn someone and they know that your life is just as bad as mine, but you're going to tell me how to live. You don't even have children, but you're going to tell me how to raise mine. They ain't never been married, but you're going to tell me how I ought to be in a marriage. You have to be careful with some people. But listen, as I close, the settlement here is the best way to judge the imperfections of others is to be free from the greater sin of ourselves. Let me say it again. This is a good statement. The settlement is the best way to judge the imperfections of others is to be free from the greater ones ourselves. Amen. We must live a life that's, that's pleasing to God, but we should let our light so shine that all men might see our good work, that God might be glorified. This qualifies us for judging and enable us to see the things as they are. The qualification for us to judge is when we have our life together. When we have our life right, when sin is not prevalent in our life, then we can go to the brother and we can correct them when our lives are together. That's what qualifies us. Because God is not a respecter of person, so we didn't do anything to deserve anything we have. We could have been the one that's homeless. We could have been the one that's hungry. We could have been the one that's helpless. We didn't do anything to deserve anything that we have. It's only by the grace of God that we are where we are today. Amen. It's only by God's grace and His, and His mercy. And then we enable us to see things as they are and to make the proper allowance of, for the frailty and the imperfection of our brothers. But remember, one day we all will stand before the judgment seat of God. We all will stand before God and God is going to cast judgment on us. But God judged perfectly because he knows all things. There's no place you can go that God's not there. There's no thought that you can think that God does not know. There's nothing that you can do that God don't have the power. He judged perfectly and righteously because he knows all things. See, but with us, we can't judge that way. See, because we don't know all things. We don't know the condition of the heart. Like the guy said, I, I was 18 years, and that just touched me. He said, I was 18 years old, and I made a mistake. The man was just trying to trick or treat with his, his daughter. He labeled a sex offender. They came, and they summarily arrested him and placed him in jail. He said, I made a mistake. And how many mistakes have we made? You know, I've done some stuff that people in prison for. The, the only difference between them and me is because I didn't get caught and they did. That's the only difference between folks going in and out of jail. I didn't get caught. So that don't make me better than them. That just make me lucky, uh, blessed, or whatever you want to call it, that I never got caught. I ain't gonna say that word. Y'all know, y'all know what I'm talking about. We have to be careful with our, with our, with our judgment. You know, and because nobody's perfect, we all sin. We all have fallen short. We don't know why people are the way they are. I listened to one guy say this in our clothes. We went to the homeless shelter, and the guy was in the homeless shelter, and this guy had a master's degree. He said his job shut down and because the job shut down he lost his job finally his wife left him he found himself in a homeless shelter not for anything that he did it's because the job shut down his wife didn't want to live with him anymore because he wasn't making the same amount of money then he finally found himself homeless you know that kind of rocked my world because a lot of the folks down there in the homeless shelter are just like we are just one paycheck away from being homeless. All you have to do is lose your job for two weeks and don't get paid and see what happens. The mortgage company start calling the car. See, we just, we just one shake from being homeless ourselves. So we have to really be careful when we judge that we don't judge hypocritically, that we judge correctly. Amen. 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 We're going to now prepare for our Lord's Supper because we all are in here are 
part of the ministry, so we will forego the opening of the doors of the church. So if 